Hey everybody, this is Ori from AstroWeb, and I want to show you how to expand Zendesk to allow your customers to open a ticket, a support ticket, using their email, just sending an email instead of a contact form or in addition to a contact form or some kind of internal system. So uh, just to, to kind of explain what's going on, usually customers go to your website or some section, they fill out a form and it automatically opens a ticket or they call uh, or email the customer support and customer support opens the ticket. But if you want to allow your customers to just send you an email to a certain email address and that'll automatically open the ticket and then you can start the support cycle, support flow, then uh, this is the video for you, right? So really simply put, we're going to show you how to enable the channel called email and how to set up the basic uh, information, okay? So let's show you some uh, concepts, how to set it up and what's going on. So first of all, um, I'm going to go here to the settings and I'm going to go to the channel section right here and I'm going to go to email. And by default, Zendesk allows you to do this thing to, for a customer to send you an email to open a ticket. And if you notice here under support addresses, you're going to have an address that uses the Zendesk subdomain or Zendesk email with a subdomain. So it's not from your own domain. So we'll show you later how to make it. Uh, from there but basically you can give this email address to your customers for example I'm, I'm just right here customer and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna email and say okay I have a problem uh, with whatever it is and um, this is my problem right and if I send an email as a customer to this email address I'm gonna click here and send after a few seconds that ticket is going to be open in Zendesk support and you're going to be able to support it, right? So if I go here and I refresh a few seconds, I it usually takes about 10 or 20 seconds to get the ticket. Okay, one second. Okay, so uh, while I do it, I I'm going to I'm going to go here to my business support right here. Okay. And uh, if I look at right here, I just got a ticket right here. It just got opened. Let's see right here. I have a problem with this is just the one I just sent right now. I have a problem with it was open from this address. This is the customer that sent in this case. That was me. Okay. And this is the business and it, now I can respond here. I can, you know, obviously respond. I can assign tickets. I can do everything that I can do normally in Zenda support, but it was automatically open for me. So now let's see that I got a reply. Okay. Let's see what happened here. Okay, here it is. So it did arrive right here. And so the customer, in addition to opening the ticket, they also got a request receiver, an auto email that was sent back to say, okay, we got your, your ticket. The ticket number is number 50 in this case, and we're going to respond to you. So now I can respond and say, you know, sorry about that and et cetera. And I can go and I can send the message back, right? So now what we did is let's see right here I got a response and now the ticket is working okay so that's it this is the the most basic version so I want to show you two extra things that you need to be aware of uh, when you set this up okay so number one is if you notice before I had I got the receive request request receive email if you want to customize this you can so I want to show you this is the first thing I want to show you so number one you're gonna go to your back end you're going to go here to email, right? Excuse me. You're going to go here to triggers and you're going to go here to notify a requester and CCs of received request. And if you scroll down, this is the, the actual um, trigger that will specify the email address. So if I change the email content right here, the customer, when they open it by email, they'll be able to see it right here. So this is the first thing you can customize and you can, you can customize it in any way you want. You can add more information. You can, you know, do whatever you want to the email template. Okay, this is the first thing. The second thing that's really important is in the email channel, sometimes you don't want this something at something dot Zendesk dot com. You want to have your own email address, and this is typically what businesses want to do. So how do you do that? First of all, you're going to go here to add address, and you're going to connect an external address. Okay, and I'm going to put in the address. You, if you have Google Suite, Google Apps, you can connect but I'm going to show you how you can do it for any uh, email system. Okay. So I, I want to say instead of uh, customers sending an email to this address, I want them to send an email to my, my address. So 
our domain, for example, I want to call it, for example, uh, support me, just so you can understand, at to the moon plus. This is the domain name we're using for this video, for this account. And I'm going to click here on this, support me, okay? Okay, and now what it's asking for, I actually, sorry, let me do one that's actually relevant, okay? Info at to the moon plus dot com. This is the relevant one. So if I click here on go, it's going to give me instructions and it's going to say, hey, when you go to your email address, I want you to forward all emails to the email that we were just using before. And by us setting up a forwarding, Zendesk will know that actually the email was received and it's going to continue with the same flow. Okay, so let's do it. Let's go here. Now I'm using Google Apps, but it doesn't matter what email provider you use, you can use that. So what do you do here? You go to your business email address and you click on settings and you click on the settings and this is with Gmail and you're going to go to forwarding and you're going to add a forwarding address, which is, excuse me, which is this one. Okay. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to add this and I'm going to click on next. Okay. And it's going to forward mail to this. So I'm going to confirm this. Okay. Now, okay, let's go right here. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to click on next. Okay. And now they have a forwarding verification code. I'm going to add this and I'm going to put the code. So it confirms that I can actually automatically send to this system. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to forward a copy of the incoming mail to this email right here and I'm going to save it. Okay. And I'm going to go back here and I'm going to finish my setup. Okay. Yes, I have finished it and I'm going to click on verify. Okay. So once it's verified, now we can, we can actually go and proceed. Okay. So I can receive emails by ticket. So now if I go ahead, I'm going to check that I set it up correctly. So now if I'm a customer and this is a complete different account, if I send an email to info in this case, okay, I have a problem. Uh, is my email set up? Is it? Okay. And so now if I send it, if everything worked correctly, I should be fine. So let's go right here. Okay. This is the, the forwarding confirmation. So this is no problem. It's not important. Okay. And I'm going to wait a few seconds. And if I did it correctly, we're good to go. And that's it. So let's wait. Here it is. I have a problem. This is, is my email set up? Yes, it is. Okay. That's it. That's the really most basic way for you to set up the channel email to receive uh, support tickets. Hi guys. So there's one more thing I need to add to the end of this video, which is regarding the from email addresses. So if you notice before, when a customer sends an email, they get a confirmation and they get in, they get emails back from my support center, right? So uh, if you notice the from address right here, the from address is still coming from the subdomain, the special Zendesk email domain. Even though I sent it as a customer to the info at my domain, uh, it's still coming from these domains. So you need to do one more DNS setting in order to make sure that it's sending from. You can send to the correct address, but from sending back from Zendesk to you is a, uh, you need to do one more setting. So how do you do that? Um, it's a little technical, but I can explain. So first of all, you go back to the settings, the channels and email, you scroll all the way down until you see here custom domain and you checkbox it and you give these instructions to your uh, server guy, your DNS guy, your technical person that helps with DNS and you fill it out and you take this, this is the, this is, you take this, you change your domain name and you change your domain name. You add two C name records right here. So here I've added one Zendesk dot, and then I point to this, this, and this, and then the second one. And if you save it correctly, now if you open a ticket, okay, it's saved. Now if you open a ticket as a customer, and let's say I want to email info at to the moon plus, okay, my support email, and I say I have a problem. Okay, and here it is. Okay, here it is. Okay, so if I sent that right now, the ticket will be open. The same flow happens. Let me go back here. Okay, let's go right here.
Okay, this one, let's just wait a few more seconds. Okay, here it is. So I have a problem, here it is. And if I respond to it, so testing one, two, three. Okay, if I respond to it, now the customer itself, if they look here, you'll go right here. I got to support the res request received. And if you notice, it's coming from the actual correct domain. Okay, and obviously any other responses are still going to come from the correct domain name. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you guys. Appreciate it.